Amen. Glory to God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing? Great. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Highly blessed. And God is day. good. Amen. Yes, he is. All the time he is good to us. That's right. Amen. There, there was a time when when we lived on our own, we, we were we were lost. That's right. And we lived we lived on our own power. If you want to call it power, it was it was nothing, you know. <laughs> but uh, when we gave our lives to Christ, uh, we had the power to endure anything. Amen. Romans uh, five one says, uh, "Peace and joy." It says, "Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus." Though whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. Amen. Amen. I'm losing my place here. And we, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only is, but we also rejoice in our suffering. Back in the day when, uh, before we knew Christ, we didn't know what to do in our time of suffering. But now we stand with God. Amen. Amen. Not only is but, but also enjoy in our suffering because we know the suffering produces perseverance. Amen. Amen. Character and the character and hope. The hope does not disappoint us, but because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us, you will see at just the right time when we, uh, we were uh, when we will still we were still powerless Jesus died for the ungodly very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us amen amen, amen. glory to God let's give him glory this morning let's uh this is a time that uh, we can uh, rejoice and glorify him this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory today. We give you the honor, Father God, and we ask that you open our hearts, Father God, and uh, Lord, that we receive your, your grace, Father God. And we, just give you, we just give you all the honor, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's stand up and celebrate him today.
give him a praise today. He is good and his mercies endure forever. Thank you, God, that your spirit moves. He's here. I feel it in my bones. You're about to move.
Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. To God be the glory. Thanks for, thanks for bringing us to that point of entering into his praise, to lifting his name up and praising him and thanking him. You know that moves God. It also has an effect on the enemy, but it also has an effect on you and I, and it also has an effect on him. We know the enemy don't like it. He don't like that. And his word says that he inhabits his praises. So we know that God likes it. And we know that it lifts him up. And he lifts us up. He touches us. We just thank him and praise him for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, good morning. Um, before we get too far along, let's see here. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. He is Lord. He is God. He is holy. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Ezer, the Lord our helper. He is Jehovah, Gomala, the Lord who rewards. He is Jehovah, Hosinu, the Lord our maker. He is God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is our Savior. He is Jesus. He is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, let's take a moment. Give me a minute. Let's lift our voices. Lift our hands. And let's praise Him and thank Him for what He's done. You're alive today. You got the breath of life in your mouth. You can start right there. Thank you, Father God, for the breath of life, for giving me a day, another day. Thank you for these pastors right here. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the clothes on my back and the food in my belly. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, for the salvation of our souls, for the healing of our bodies. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this body of Christ that's sitting in here right now and those that are coming in the next hour. We thank you and praise you for the work that you're doing here in Lockhart, Texas, in Cabo County. We thank you for the work that you're doing all over the world. Hallelujah. We praise you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, soon we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ at the end of the month. That's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, today is Communion Sunday, so prepare your hearts and your mind and, you know, uh, get ready to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Um, okay, moving right along here. Let's see. Ah, tithing offering. Okay, let's, let's bless the Lord with our tithe and offerings. Let's take a look at Malachi 3.10. All right, Malachi 3.10, and I quote, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the window of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. Hallelujah. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for opening the windows of heaven and pouring out a blessing that we can't contain. Thank you for rebuking the devourer for our sakes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, if you will, at this time, bring your tithe and offering and place them in the basket here. And then we'll pray over them. Thank you for the word that you're going to impart to us today through our pastor. 
others. Thank you and praise you for that. Thank you. Thank you for saving us. Hallelujah. All right. Let's pray over the tithe and offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we lift up these tithing offerings to you, and we offer them to you, and we ask you to bless them and bless the giver in the mighty name of Jesus, according to your word. Malachi 3.10, you'll open the window of heaven and pour out the blessing that we can't even receive. There won't be room for it, and you'll rebuke the devourer for our sakes. You'll protect our food and make sure that we have plenty to eat. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Amen and amen. We thank you and praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's see. Announcements. Okay. Announcements. Let's do some announcements. All right. Announcements. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, here we go. All right. Announcements for today. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Visit us online at vclockhart.com. You'll find all kinds of uh, things there, information about the church. Uh, you can also give online, uh, keep up with what's going on. Uh, Wednesday night Bible study, 7 p.m. We are currently studying the effects of praise, and I, I must admit, it's some good stuff. It's very good, very good wisdom and knowledge in that. Hallelujah. Also, on, on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we have classes for the youth and the children, 7 p.m. Okay. Um, Resurrection Sunday. We are collecting plastic eggs and bags of individually wrapped candy for our upcoming children Easter egg hunt. So drop off your donations in the children's classroom back there, and we'll take it from there. March 31st, Easter Sunday. We will have a combined service at 10 o'clock. Fellowship following, uh, food, or fellowship following food, fellowship following food. Sign up sheet will be available next week. So you can sign up for that. All right, so mark your calendar for that one. Also, English services on a normal day is 9 o'clock on Sunday, at 9 a.m., and Spanish at 11 a.m. And thus concludes the announcements for today. Um, do we have kids to dismiss for children's church? I think we might have a few. So kids, you can be dismissed. And now, last but not least, let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Sally as she comes to deliver the word. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Y'all enjoy that worship. It's awesome. awesome. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. We're going to get started right away. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning, Father. I thank you for everyone that's present here, Father, and those watching us online. Father, I pray this morning, Father, that you would open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to see and to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to each one of us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as the word goes out, that it would touch my brothers and sisters' hearts, Father, that they would take some and put it in their heart, Father, and that it would prosper, Father, and multiply in their lives, Father. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the anointing, Father. I thank you, Lord, and I pray, Father, Holy Spirit, that you would just work through me and that I would only say what you want me to say, Father, and that to you would be all the glory and honor this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. It's, uh, it's not hard to to start telling God how, how grateful we are. You know, we can, we could take more than a minute to do that, right? But, but it's, um, it's just so awesome. This morning, I uh, titled my message, Keep on Hearing. Amen. Keep on hearing. Amen. 
So we're going to keep on here, and we're going to see what that's all about this morning. And I'm going to bring some of the, script, the scriptures that I have. We've heard them. I've been preaching on them. I've been bringing them. And, but hopefully um, there will be, um, you can get something else from it, okay? There's always more to get from the word of God, amen? So this morning I'm going to be throwing out some seeds, okay? What? Use your imagination. I got a bag of seeds. I'm going to get them and I'll throw them. Catch it. <laughs> Catch it, Amana. <upon> seeds. <laughs> and get those seeds, plant them in your heart, put them in your heart, Amen. Matthew 13, we're going to start at verse 3. You want, you want a seed? <laughs> I didn't throw any in the middle. Catch it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I missed the middle aisle. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Matthew 13, verse 3 to 9. Amen. Everybody knows this. It's about the parable about the, the sower and the seed. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold. A sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Wayside, uh, you could say, is the unbelievers, people that don't understand the word of God. Amen? Verse 5, some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Amen? What's a stony place? It's, it's a hard place, right? So it's a hard heart. Amen? And so there's, there wasn't much root to it. And six, it says, but when the sun was up, they scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse seven, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. And the thorns can be the cares of the world, that choke out the word in our lives, amen? amen? And verse 8, but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some 100, some 60, and some 30. Verse 9 says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen? amen. The, Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he was telling them that if they didn't understand this parable, they would not understand any parable. Amen? And that this parable was the key to all other parables. Amen. So we see the master key to this parable is found here in verse 9, where it says that he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen? Amen. So when you find hearing in the New Testament, especially in the Gospels, what it's actually saying, it's saying that he that has ears to hear, let him keep on hearing, right? And the second here, because it says ears to hear, let him hear, is, is a linear action. In the Greek word, it, it's an action that's linear, right? Which means it is a continuous action. It's something that is continuing, amen? And there's also... An additional meeting in the scripture right here, and it's, a, it's more than just hearing with our physical ear. We have to understand what's being said. Amen? So in other words, it's saying, let him understand what he's hearing. Got it? So we have to understand what we're, what we're hearing. And so the references to eyes and ears that the word of God says is referring to a spiritual understanding. Amen? which is only going to come by continually repeating the, uh, God's word and by keeping it in the midst of our heart until a revelation comes. Because you can hear the word and you can see it, but until it reveals itself to you, you will not understand it. You know, you might read it with your mind and you can understand it just like reading anything, but for it to come alive in, in, in you and work through you, you have to understand it, which is you have to have revelation of what is speaking to you because the word talks, right? It, the, the same idea you can find in Romans 10, 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can hear God's word every day and read it every day, but one day you actually hear it. 
and you understand it, you're going, oh, my, oh yeah, that's what it was saying. Have you ever had that? You're reading it, and it, you've read it over and over a lot of times before, and then one day you hear what it's actually telling you. Amen? So it's important, um, you know, to listen to, to dif different speakers, different preachers, you know, just make sure it's somebody that, that, that you trust, that kind of thinks, thinks like we do. You know, like we, I think most of us here listen to Brother Andrew Womack, um, his teachings. Uh, I, grad I went through his school, and so there are a lot of good teachers and preachers. I, usually the, the preachers that I listen to, because I'll listen to a lot of them, they're usually preachers that are teachers. So when they're preaching, you're learning something, or they're teaching you something. I like that because I, I want to be learning more and more every day. So it's good to listen to other preachers because you might get, they might explain it in a different way that I can or anybody else can and give you a new insight into what the word is saying. Amen. But you have to be careful to, and, and listen. And, you know, if you depend on the Holy Spirit, it'll tell you. Right? You would be listening to somebody and they, they send something. They say something and it kind of, you get a witness. Amen. And you say, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be listening because it's not in line with what, what I believe. Amen. But it's good. Learn from, from other teachers and, and preachers because, you know, we have to be, we have to have a balance in the word. You know, we don't, we, we don't want to be all the way to the left or all the way to the, to the right. But we want to be balanced, isn't it? Amen. So we, we need to listen and see. Because the Bible, there are no new truths. It's all true. So it's nothing new. It should be in line with the word. Amen? And sometimes the things, they sound good because they're preaching on fire and it's going and they're saying all these things. And you're going, amen, getting it all wrapped up. In the, and and then, um, then if you really listen... Maybe what they're actually saying, that's not really in line with the word. Amen. Amen. So be careful when you listen to other pastors. Amen. John 8, 30 to 32. Here, starting at 21, Jesus is talking about, you know, his time is coming when he's going to leave. He's talking to a group, and there's Jews, all Jews there. And he's telling them, you know, they're, they're asking him, well, who, who is this man? And he's telling them. I'm the same one that's been telling you why I've been here. I'm, I'm here. The Lord God sent me, and I speak what he says, and, and, and here I am. I've been telling you these truths, and now it's come a time that, you know, he's telling them that he, he's going to be crucified. And so he's preaching to them and teaching them, and in verse 30 he says, And as he spoke these words, many believed on him. It means that they suddenly believed what he had been telling them all along. So I guess they became born again because when you believe in Jesus Christ and, and, and receive him, then we call that that you're born again. In verse 31, and this is before Jesus had gone to, to the cross. So this, that's the way they were born again. They just believed and had faith in God in the Old Testament. Verse 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide... In my word, you are my disciples indeed. So we have to continue in the word. It says, if you abide, and abide is a word that means continue. It's, it's continuing in the word that's important. Amen? And in verse 32, it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So here, pay close attention that it says, if you abide in my word, you know, you have to abide in his word, and then you will be free, right? If you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen? So it's the truth of the word. As we continue in his word, we continue hearing his word, we will, uh, if we abide in that, by continue in it, you will be set free, and, but not just one time. You have to continue in it to keep that freedom. Amen? Amen? You know, there's been a lot of people 
that have been through this church and and a lot of times they come because they're in a crisis and they need God and they come and they're all you know they're in desperation and they want prayer and they want you to pray for them like if you're gonna like if it's a magic wand and everything's gonna be okay just because we've prayed for you they you know it, it they have to take part in it they have to get into the word so they come and they and they'll be here for a while. They get into the word, and then things start changing in their lives, and they see God moving in their lives, and, and then everything's good. And then what happens is they back away from the word. They were real, you know, they were real attentive to the word and continuing it. But once their problem has been solved, they're gone. And then you won't see them again until they have another crisis. We've seen that a lot. We've been here 15 years, and... And people will, you know, and then you'll see them in town. Oh, we're with you there, Pastor. We're there. We're, you know, but they're not here listening. And, and, and if they're not in the word, and I said, well, that's good. Just get into a good church if you don't want to come here. But listen to the word or, or, or get, you know, get fed. Continue in his word. Don't just come when you're in a crisis, you know, because that's what, you know, it's like, they get the word, and it's their magic genie, and they'll rub on it, and, you know, oh, Lord, I need help, and, you know, they're desperate and crying and going on and on, and they get their word, they get their three wishes, right, and then they're, they've got it, and then they're gone. That's not what the word is here for. It's just to continue in it, be in it continually. That's like, I don't know, I, would, I, I take offense to that. I think that would be offensive to the Lord. You just come to me when you need something from me. But where are you? Amen? Thank you, Lord. The word doesn't really work that way. Jesus said, if you continue in the truth, the truth is his word, then and the truth will set you free. Amen? Amen. It doesn't, the word doesn't only make you free, but if the word can keep you free, if you continue in it. Got that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. God doesn't just heal you. He wants you to walk in health. Amen. Healing comes through the gifts of the spirit, but divine health comes through walking in the word, continuing in the word. If you continue in the word, you will walk in divine health. I don't think any of us, well, maybe some of y'all are walking in divine health, but I haven't made it there yet. <laughs> That's my goal, right? Walking in divine health means that um, you're never sick. I mean, sickness is going to attack your body, but you have the authority and the power to speak over it Amen. and speak the word over it that it's going gonna, it's gonna to flee. It's not going to stay on you. Amen? Amen? And so that's a divine that you walk in the word, and, and, and it's a divine healing. That's divine healing that you're, you're strong and healthy, and that, that you're, you're, you're working to live through, to be 120, like the Bible says, that we're, we are made to live 120 years. And it doesn't say that we're going to, it doesn't say, uh, you know, that you have to die sick. Amen? You can just, you know, leave the, you know, tell the, whole, the Holy Spirit, just let it go. Amen? Use your Indian blood if you have any in it. <laughs> Today is a good day to die. That's what Jesse's uncle did. They're, they're, they're Tatamara Indians. And one day, you know, he, he came out of his house and, and he was burning everything that was in his house. And they said, what, you know, what's going on? What are you doing? He goes, I'm going to die today. And he did. He died that day. He just gave up the ghost. And he was, he was 100, right over 100 years, 103 years old. I guess he says, this is long enough. But he, the Lord has made us to live that long. And it doesn't mean that we have to be sick or blind or crippled to live that long. Or, or you know, or that our mind's going to be, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're going to have Alzheimer's or all this other stuff. Old people, what they call old people, diseases, don't claim those. <laughs> claim your healing, claim that you're strong and healthy and that you're going to have, you're going to be old and your mind's going to be right and, and, and your vigor's going to be good, you know, it's like Moses. It says that his eyes were dim and his vigor, his, his vigor was abated. He was strong 
and healthy, and he had good eyesight at the age that he was, over 100. Amen? So that's for us. If we abide in his word, then we will have that, we can live in that divine health. And 3 John 1, 2, beloved, this is uh, John, but it's the word of God, and, and he's calling us beloved, my love. I could call my husband my love. <laughs> beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Amen. Amen. And that's the scripture that I've told you all that Pastor Jesus and I have been praying for, 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 for this congregation, for our members here. This is our prayer for you, that we want you to prosper and to be in, in good health, prosper in all things. Amen. As your soul prospers, your soul is where your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination is. Amen. We need to use all those things. And, and as you hear the word of God and, and you take those seeds of the word and you plant them in your heart, guess what? Your soul's going to prosper. And as your soul prospers, then you're going to prosper in all things and be in health. So all things is everything that you do every day in your life. Amen? And then even in health. Isn't that awesome? So that's, that's our prayer for you. And it's my desire that when you come here on Sundays and, and you hear my words or, or the words that the Lord has given me, my desire is that you're learning something. Because it, it that tells me that your soul is prospering. If you if you learn something, I, you know anything, it could just be a word. You know, maybe the Lord just quickens something in your word because the 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 truth of the word has always been the same. It's the same scriptures. If you've been here for thousands and thousands of years, there's nothing new. But that but that um, but that something awakened in you. Amen. That's my desire that, that you learn and that you grow and that you be mature. And if, you're, if you already know everything, that's great. Just say thank you, you know, just say thank you for reminding me and, and say I love you. <laughs> and I'm good with that, that I reminded you or that maybe you heard something that you hadn't heard before or you heard it differently. Amen? That's what I'm saying about listening to other um, pastor teachers um, you know, they might, we all have the same word, it's the same truth in the word, but maybe they, they, they give a different insight to it, because everybody looks at things a little bit different. It's like the disciples and the four gospels, it's all the same stories. They all wrote about the same stories, but they have their own outlook. They, they saw from different angles, amen? But it's the same truth. We're going to Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20 and 22, last Sunday I left you with these scriptures. As I closed, I read these to you. And I asked you to meditate on them, read them, and meditate on them. But this is what it says. It says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Amen. When you give attention to something... You, you need to, um, it's not a one-time thing. It's something that you do over and over again. Amen? Like, we attend to washing dishes, right? When we eat, we, we attend to, to washing our dishes, and, and they're not going to stay clean forever because the next time we eat and use our dishes, we're going to have to wash them again. So we're attending to them. When we mow the, my husband mows the lawn, he's not going to mow it one time and it's going to be done forever, right? He has to attend to it, you know, run the weed eater, make sure he gets all the weeds, you know. We attend to it. We've been trimming trees in, you know, my mom's house and the other house, and, and that's something that we have to attend to because the trees grow out of control, right? And, and so that's something that you have to do over and over. It's the same with the word. We have to attend to it. We have to, to keep it in our heart. Amen? And, you know, the word, everything, it has rewards. So if you attend to the word, there are tremendous rewards. You might get a reward, or if you put your kids 
to wash the dishes and mow the lawn, you might give them a reward, right? Give them an allowance or, or you know, give them some money to buy it, whatever. You, you're giving them a reward. But if we stay in the word and we attend to God's word, we're going to have great rewards. Bible says that when we get to heaven, we're going to get rewards for what we did with the talents the Lord gave us. Amen? Amen. What did we do with his word? Amen? And we're going to have, we're going to reap bigger rewards. Amen? So if you sow time into the word and attend to it, you're going to reap back tremendous benefits. You're always going to get more than what you put into it. You're going to get 30, 60, 100 fold back. Amen? Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Lord. Okay, so these verses, oh, wait, I didn't read all of them. I got I took off on one and didn't read the other ones. 21. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are alive to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So these verses from Proverbs tell us how to attend to the word. First of all, in verse 20, we're going to incline your ear. You're, when you're reading the word and you're reading it, incline is like you're, what's it saying, right? You're trying to hear, what's it saying? How many of you know that this word talks? It talks, right? Because you can be reading and say, okay, Lord, he'll talk to you. So you want to incline your reading and you want to, you know, Pay attention, incline. Thank you, Lord. And it's like in, in the scriptures we read in Matthew 13, 9, it says, Jesus says that those who have ears to hear, let him hear. So this verse is saying the same thing. It's telling us that we have an ear, incline it to hear. Amen? We're going to hear. So incline your ear to his sayings. You have to bend over. A little bit, right? With to make an effort to get close and to hear, to to make an effort to hear what it's saying, get close to it, read and listen. Amen. It takes an effort to fill your ear with His Word. You know, when I read the Word, um, I've been uh, followed trying to do the Bible in a in a year. I'm not doing it perfectly. And, and I don't condemn myself if I skip a day. <laughs> and I don't try to go back and, and catch up. I just let it go. You know, it's okay. Don't, you know, don't get too, you know, oh, I missed my routine, that I missed something. God's not mad at you. He just wants to spend time with you. Amen? Amen. And so I, I it's, a, it's a, from Andrew Womack. You can, you can put, download it to your to your iPad or your phone or whatever, and it's the daily word, and then it has commentaries. It explains it to you and all this kind of stuff. And and so sometimes I read. I have my Bible. I'm reading it on there. I'd rather read it on my Bible because Brother Andrew uses King James, and I like my, you know, read it a little bit plainer, plainer English, New King James. So I'll read it, and I'll see what he, they're commenting about it. But I, but sometimes I read it out loud so that I can hear it. I read it to myself. So I'm reading it, I've got, I'm looking at it, and I'm listening, I'm hearing, and then I'll read through it, but sometimes something will catch me, and, and I try to stop, and, and I shut everything down, and, and I just listen to what, 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 what did that tell me? What is it trying to tell me, talk, talk to me? And it's usually, a, uh, you see something that you hadn't seen before. I'm, I'm sure that happens to y'all too, amen? So we have to read and listen. Second, do not let it, uh, them depart from your eyes in, in verse 21. It says, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, amen? So even though the word uh, goes into your ears, the devil will jump in front of your eyes so you don't see it. Because you, you know when you're in the Word and you're trying to read and you're trying to hear things pop in your mind that, oh, you've got to do this or you've got to do that. And he could use the Word to distract you as well because it'll bring a Word and then you're in a wild goose chase 
trying to look up the other thing that popped into your head and you go, oh, wait a minute, I was focused on this. It's trying to get your focus off the word. Because if you, if you lose your focus, you might, you know, you don't really grab what the, the Lord's trying to tell you. Are you does that make sense? <laughs> or am I the only one that doesn't know how to read well? <laughs> you, you, okay, just want to make sure you're with me. So you have two gates. Remember I talked about gates in the beginning of the year. So you've got your ear gates and your eye gates. And you have to, be, you have to um, keep watch what's going into your ears and what's before your eyes. You got to keep the word in front of your eyes. Keep it, you know, uh, where you can read it. You know, put it uh, in my bathroom. I have scriptures that I have typed out that I want to meditate on, that I want to uh, confess over myself, and and they're glued all around my my mirror and and all around the side of my mirror, just little pieces of paper with scriptures. Um, I took them, some of them down, the paper ones, because the papers were getting all crumbly already. And I need new scriptures, different ones that I want to meditate in. Um, but that's keeping it in front of your eyes because when you're in there washing the, your face or brushing your teeth, you can read a scripture. It's in front of you. Amen? And so it's right, you know, put it on a sticky note if it's just something you thought about. So the next time you go in there, you can, you can see it. You can talk about the word when you're at breakfast and, and listen to the word. You say when we're having breakfast, I'll... I'll be listening to Andrew Womack, whatever the program, the weekly program. So we're listening. And sometimes I'll turn it off when my husband has a word. And we're talking about the word, and he'll say to me, so I'll turn it off and listen to what the Lord's been telling him. So you're, you're, you're keeping it in the midst of your heart. Amen? You're keeping it. And, I, and when I was at work, when I was, well, even now in my office at home, I've got scriptures around my computer and and at work when I was at work in my office I had scriptures about you know the business and and scriptures that that I could declare over our business and I had them tacked around my computer so that I could keep that word and when when something was discouraging in business I could read that and it would remind me about what the word says and the one thing uh, that was really special for me is this last uh, women's meeting that we had uh, was we were celebrating Valentine and, and people's birthday that were in February and Joanne had the ladies uh, write me a note and she put them in a little box a note to encourage me it could be a scripture or a word of encouragement and so that's something that that you know that was so precious to me because the women did put scriptures or the women did um, just write down and some women just came and gave me a hug and gave me an encouraging word and so I received that and that's something that I could keep when I'm alone there's nobody there to encourage me it's just to encourage yourself right we can encourage ourselves but now I have that little extra I'll go over there and I said let me see what my sisters are telling me and I can read them and it encourages me so it's good to have it where you can, you know, you can take those out and, and read them. Thank you, Lord. So always have or keep the word in front of your eyes. The third t thing that it says in verse 21, it says, the things to do with God's word is to keep it in the midst of your heart. The word, um, this causes a word to go so deeply into your heart that the birds can't, eat the seed of the word amen like it says in matthew um the verse that we uh, reread in matthew chapter 13 amen. amen verse 4 said where the seed fell on the wayside and the birds came and devoured them so you you get that word and you get it in the midst of your heart thank you lord and by keeping it ever in your ear and ever before your eyes, it goes deep into your heart. Amen? Into your spirit. It's in your spirit. All the word, since you have Jesus living in you, right? All the word's there. And it's there, but you have to know it to know what, what you draw from. And um, 
So that's why it's important to read it so that, that you can know it in your mind as well as in your heart, in your soulish part, because in the spirit it's there. Amen? And sometimes you might not even know the word. And you could have a revelation or a dream or something, and the Lord tell you, go to, like I had one young lady say, she didn't know all the Bibles in the, in, in the all the books in the Bible. And she goes, she had a dream, and she heard the Lord tell her to go read Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> and she goes, I didn't even know there was a book in the Bible called that. You know, so he will give you a word, you know, and then you can read it and meditate on it. Get it in your soul. It's in your spirit. But when your soul and your spirit agree, guess what? It's going to come out through your, through your body. Amen? In the flesh. It'll come out and work for you. Thank you, Lord. So here's what we do. And we're, we have two parables here. One in the Old Testament about incline, inclining your ear. And then the sower sows the seed. And they're pretty much saying the same thing. Have you ever noticed that if you're reading through the Old Testament, there's scriptures in there that are actually scriptures in the New Testament as well. Amen. Scriptures saying, like the Lord says, that he will never leave us or forsake us. You know, he said that to the people in the Old Testament. It's the same thing. The Old Testament people, God saved the same, same way we do. They accepted the Lord because they had faith and they believed in him. Amen. We have a new covenant but it's still the same principle. We have to believe in Jesus Christ and receive him and have faith in him. Amen. So here we see in the two, in the two we compare them. It's, they're saying the same thing. In uh, Matthew, it says that um, if we continue hearing and seeing, where it says that we continue to hear and see, that brings comprehension and understanding. Right? We have to hear and we have to understand and comprehend what we're reading and what we're seeing and that's revelation and the seed that's planted it gets planted in our heart and it's just like we don't know what's going on even when we plant a flower seed or a, or a fruit seed we plant it in the ground but we actually don't know what's going on in the ground we can't see it you know what it's doing but it's been planted. Amen? Something's going on in there. And then uh, when the seed breaks forth, then it brings the flower and it reveals something. Right? So we see the fruit. And then when that happens, then we healing comes, our financial uh, finances come. Amen? Whatever we're believing for. Then you water that seed with the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And then compare it to Proverbs chapter 4. It says that God's word brings life and health to all, the, to all your flesh. Amen? In other words, the word of God prospers you first inside, and then it comes outside. Amen? Because it's going deep into your heart, and it's, it's doing something in there. It's growing, and then it comes out. We see the fruit. Amen? So it's much, it's almost the same like the seed. It's the same thing, the same principle. Amen? It goes into the ground, and then whatever is working on in there, we can't see it to the natural eye, but when it creates the fruit, then, it, then we can see it. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so as the word is planted in our heart, the first thing is that it, it, get, it begins to produce life. And you, peace, joy, all the fruit of the spirit. Amen? It produces all that. You, you feed that. Then it will spring forth and bring health to all your flesh. Keeping the word in your heart will cause even the natural things to break forth. Amen? Whatever you're believing for in the natural in your heart, it's going to come out. It will come to manifest. If you can see it, you can have it. Right. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. In Matthew, we go back to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 16 and 17. It says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. 
For assuredly, I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. It's talking about the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophets. They desired to see what we see today. They knew, you know, they had types and shadows, and, and they knew what our life was going to be like, that we were going to be carrying Jesus in us. The Spirit of God was going to live in us, not just come upon us, right? Because in the Old Testament prophets and, and you know, they, the, the Spirit of God would come upon them, but it didn't live there. And after the cross, the new covenant, we have Jesus living in us. We have all power and authority living in us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So what happens to the eyes that see and the ears to hear? It becomes life to those who find them and health to all our flesh. Isn't that awesome? So the meaning of this parable is this, that a parable is not understood by casual hearing or seeing. It is understood by a continual going over and over and over until the revelation occurs, until it becomes alive in you. Because you can read it and uh, understand it with your mind, but until you get it down in your spirit and you believe it and you know for a fact, without a doubt, that what the Word of God says is true and that it's working in you, Wow, that's revelation. And then you're going to have everything that the word says you can have. Amen? Amen. I, have, I, have, I have a great testimony that, that lines up with this word. But I'm not going to share it with you today. <laughs> it's, it's, if it was only you, I'd share it with you. You're my family. But there's people watching us online. I'm not sure I want to share it with everybody in the world. But I'll share it on Wednesday if you remind me. If you want to hear it, come to Wednesday night. (laughs) Amen. It's awesome. It just proves, it just shows how the word is real. It's true. It's working. It's working in our lives every day. I'm amazed. You know, I tell you know, I, I, it just makes me cry sometimes because I get so joyful. That's, that's the word of God in you. Amen. You know, just overwhelmed with his goodness and how good he is to us and, and how truthful he is and that he loves you so much that there's nothing that you could ever do that would take that love away from you. Amen? Amen. He can't even be mad at you, you know? You could get mad at your spouse or, or be at odds or whatever, but God or you... If you're mad at God, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you, but God's not mad at, with you. Amen? He will never be mad with you. He loves you that much. Amen? And, you know, I preach to myself. I don't have it down 100%, but I'm a whole lot farther than I used to be. Way farther. And I'm, I'm running because, because I just see his goodness every day. I see you know, his answers, if you believe when you pray that you receive, when you pray, you're going to have it. And if you can see it, it's going to come alive. It's going to, it's in there. It's already done. God's already answered all your prayers. He did everything when he went to the cross, and we're going to be celebrating uh, communion this morning. Amen? Amen. And grateful to him for for what he's done in our lives. Amen? It's real. You know? And as long as you keep your heart open to the word of God and, and, and you don't have a hard heart, you know, a hard heart is just a heart full of anger and unforgiveness and strife and just all these things. Read the word. It tells you all the things that will keep you from hearing his word. Amen? You need to let all that go. Or if you don't have love, that's the main thing. If you don't have love in your heart, then you're not going to get anything. You know, you could pray all you want and stuff, but, but, you know, you have to forgive. You have to have God's kind of love because then you aren't truly walking in, in like he is. He wants us to be followers, you know, 
That's the whole reason he came, to show us how to live in the kingdom of God. Amen? And to follow after his example. Amen? And we're to take the gospel to the world. And that's what we're doing. We're out in the world, right? Because, you know, when, when Jesus walked, when he, when he was here, um, the, the area that he preached, the gospel, where he went, was only a hundred mile radius and all where he went. And when he left, he told, what did he tell the disciples? To go and make disciples, right? And take the gospel to Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea. That was to the outer ends of the earth. We're in the outer ends of the earth. Because what happened? That when Jesus was gone, and they came against the, persecuted the Jews, right? They, they were afraid and they scattered. And they went to different places. Went to Rome. They went to, you know, Corinth. They went to all, Ephesus. They went to all these places. They ran in persecution and fear. But wherever they went, they preached the gospel. Amen. Wherever you go, preach the gospel. Amen. Tell them you, you serve a God that's alive and well and full of blessings. And, and we're not there for the blessings, but it's just as you keep the word in you and believe it and live it I mean you'll be overwhelmed you will be so overwhelmed amen my husband and I have been um, tithers for since we were married 40 years we've been giving into the kingdom of God and you can't I'll give God you can't he is, he'll give you more than you will ever imagine. Like if Ephesians 3.20 says, he will give you more than you can think or ask for. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and he's not finished every day. He wants to give blessings to you. Yeah. Amen? But you've got to, you've got to, you receive it. Right. Amen? Amen? Last night as, as I was going to sleep, I heard a word. And it said, the day I got saved was the day I got everything. Amen. I heard that. It says, because I was thinking and it just came up. It's the day I got saved was the day I got everything. It means I got all his blessing. I got all the blessings of God. Everything was given to me at the moment that I was saved. You got everything that's in the word of God the day you got saved. But we have to, our soul has to prosper so that we can have everything. We have to, the, the part is we have to receive it, right? And sometimes we don't know that when we first come to the Lord, but you received everything of God, everything that he is is in you, every, all his power, all his authority, all that he is, the power, the power of God is in your mouth. Amen. But it comes from once you get saved, you get, get here, amen, into a good Bible teaching church where they'll teach you the word of God. You allow that word. You continue in his word. You read his word. You get it. You might not understand it, but you, you just keep, stay with it. Read the word. Continue in it. And as you continue in it, then a revelation will come. Understanding will come. Amen? And then, and then you will be walking in, in his word. And that's what he came to show you how to live your life. Amen? Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. So when you, then when you understand the righteousness of God, you understand all that he paid on the cross for you and you receive those gifts, then you will walk in revelation and in, in health. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. And like I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not all there yet. <laughs> I still have problems. Well, no longer problems with my eyes. But I was telling my husband this morning. It's been a couple of nights that I'm, I'm sleeping and I get a sharp, sharp pain in my eye, my right eye, and and that's the one that I've had problems with um, for years and years. But um, what was 
part of the problem was the inflammation in my body. And so, um, and I go to doctors, Dr. Jesus first, right? <laughs> and then medical doctors. And so they're trying to, they, they control my, my infl the inflammation is not mine. Do you know inflammation is a curse? It's in Deuteronomy 28. And I say, this is a curse, I gotta get it off. So no longer inflammation and losing weight had something to do with it, it helped. And diet, you know, there's so many things in the world that, that makes you sick and, you, and we still eat them. But those things make a difference. But when the Lord was here in Acts 10, 38, it says that God anointed Jesus with power, with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about uh, healing everyone that, was, uh, that had disease or a demonic spirit. He went about healing everybody. And I read through the Gospels, and Jesus never asked anybody, are you eating right? Amen? He never asked him that. Have you ever read that? No. He just healed him. He had compassion for them and he healed them. So he's the same today. He never changes. So he's healed me. Amen? Amen. But I got to get my thinking in line with what his word is saying. Amen. Because I, I'll second guess, you know, well, I'm not eating right. I shouldn't. I ate that. I need to lose weight. I need to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make that. This is why it's happening. But I had to just receive it, and I've been receiving. So at night when I've been feeling these pains in my eyes, I've been waking up, and I just tell God, God, thank you, because you're doing surgery in my eye. Amen? Amen. And because, you know, of all the damage over the years that it's been damaged, but there's nothing impossible for the Lord. Amen. That's what the word says, that there's nothing impossible. You, Amen? So I can see. I see good. I might not see clear back there, but I see Peggy's beautiful face back there. <laughs> I can see her, you know. And it was a time that I really couldn't see anything out of that eye. I was blind. I was, they said I was blind, but I said, the devil's a liar. Amen. 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 But I thank God. And, and so we're all, you know, I don't have a down pack. I'm preaching to myself too. But I'm farther than, than I used to be. And I'm believing God for everything. And, and one day we're soon, maybe this year, maybe we need to declare it. This year we're going to learn to walk in divine healing. Amen. And everybody, every member of Vision Church of Lockhart is going to be walking in divine healing. Amen. You receive that? Yeah, receive it. We'll be walking in divine healing. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's all the word I have for you today. We've got uh, communion. Uh, if anybody's here that's never received the Lord as your Lord and Savior, um, that's the only qualification to take communion is that you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. People watching us online, um, if you want to take communion, just get a, a little cup of a drink or something um, and um, a cracker or a piece of bread. And you could take communion with us. Uh, but if you never made Jesus your Lord of your life, today's a good day to do that. And all you have to do, the word says, that if you believe in your heart and, and confess with your mouth, then you shall be saved. So you can say a simple prayer. Father, I believe in my heart that you came to this earth, that you lived here, Father, and that you died for me. On the cross at Calvary, you died for my sins, for my sicknesses, for for my well, for my for rich. You became poor so that I would be rich. For prosperity, Father, I receive you, Lord, as my Lord and Savior. Come and do something with my life. I surrender it to you. I receive you now. I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Real simple prayer. And also, um, in the life that we're living today and in the world that we're living, we need the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost living in us, you know. Be, and, um, you know, that's not just speaking in tongues. There's so much 
more to it, but that's evidence, that's some evidence that you have been baptized in this Holy Spirit. And that's even more simple. Just ask your Father, Father, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. I receive it now. Thank you for baptizing me. That simple. And if you will um, drop us a line through, our e uh, through email on our website, we want to send you out a book if you make this decision today that says the new you and the Holy Spirit will explain a little bit better what you have just done. Amen? Amen. We want to encourage you. We want to pray for you. Let us know who you are. And uh, if you're not around this area, get and find you a, a church that will going to teach the word of God to you. Amen? And it's going to encourage you and it's going to love on you. Amen? To help you grow. Come alongside you and hold each other up like we sisters do at our meetings. We hold each other up, right? We pray and for one another and we just love on one another. Amen? Amen. So we want to do that with everyone that just came into the family of God. Amen? Amen. You, Amen. We, you just joined the family of God. We're all part of his body. He's our head and we're his body. Amen? So welcome to to the family and you can uh, have communion with us this morning. If y'all want to all come up, we'll get started with that. Thank you, Lord. Did y'all get something this morning? Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. <clears throat> oh, how sweet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Start thinking about on the Lord and... <clears throat> We're going to remember him this morning by taking communion. <clears throat> oh, good. I have some glasses in my purse. Can you get reading glasses? Should be there on the side. Yeah, <laughs> you know everything's purple. <laughs> Gotta be purple. When you take this cup this morning, remember that you have been fully forgiven, amen? Because Jesus' blood, because of his blood shed on the cross, you've been fully forgiven. And when you eat the bread, Remember that you've been healed and made whole by his body, by the stripes on his body that was broken for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And when we take communion, what you're saying is you're, in, you're ingesting the power of God and his word. You're taking it in. You're receiving his healing power, receiving his forgiveness. And, you know, it's, it's a new covenant, right? We're under a new covenant. And covenants were, you know, back in the day, you would cut your finger and, and touch the blood. And, and you're, you're like blood with sisters or brother and sister forever because you had that covenant. Jesus shed his blood for us in a covenant with him. And when we take this communion this morning, we're remembering that, right? And, we, and guess what? He's taking it with you, Right? Because where's Jesus? He's in your heart. He's in your spirit. He's with you. So we're, we're taking it with him. Amen? And, he, and, and it's, we're just remembering that covenant that he made with us. Isn't that awesome? And he's just reassuring as we remember him, he's remembering us that we're his children. We're his body. We're his finger, his toe, whatever part we, we it's ours. Amen. We're doing our part. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Lord. He never left us or forsaken. He's still here with us. Amen. 
I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we take this bread, Father, and we remember those the sacrifice, those lashes that you took on your body for me, Father. And fathers, we remember that your body was broken. We break this bread and, and we bless it. And we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice you made for us. Thank you, Father, as we remember you with this piece of bread. We give you thanks and honor, Father. You may take the bread. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were finished. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In the, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance as of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Father, We thank you, Lord, for the blood you shed on the cross for us, Father. Fathers, we, we remember you going there, Fathers. We look upon your broken body for us, Father, and your blood shed for us, Father. Father, there are no words that we can say thank you, Father, that would even mean anything to how grateful we are that you did that for us. And as you were there, Father, you were looking out ahead and you saw us, Father. You saw us here this day. You saw us standing here in awe of you, Father, remembering that great sacrifice that you did for us. And Father, I thank you for choosing us, Father, for such a time as this. Father, thank you for your blood covenant with us. And we take this cup this morning to remember that sacrifice. And we thank you, Lord. We bless this cup in the name of Jesus. You may take your cup, the cup. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hope you're full of gratitude this morning in your heart with what Jesus has done in your life so far and that he has so much more for us. Amen. And um, if you have any prayer needs, Pastor Jesus, you come up here. Um, and Pastor Sandra, we'll be up here to pray for you, to agree with you if you have anything in your heart uh, that you want us to agree with you. You know, we just want to come alongside of you and agree. So, says we're to agree you shall have what you've been praying for amen and um if y'all would just wait a minute to see if anybody comes up for prayer and grace will be playing and and once we're done praying if anybody has a prayer request then we can be dismissed and we'll dismiss you up here okay anybody have a prayer request or want to come up and have